All right, everybody, and welcome to Ring Respect Radio right here on the Video Bros Network. You all know my co-host, the man with the angelic voice, Paul Smokes, but we're joined by another great guest at this time. Roberto, welcome to Ring Respect. Thanks for joining us hey. here today. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man, it's been yeah. a long time. We've been wanting to get you on the show here and stuff like that. Uh, you've been a big influence on uh, Pop Smokes and I being able to do Ring Respect the way we've done over the last couple of years, helping to, uh, you know, get us started where we were in the business and stuff like that. We wanted to have you on here, talk a little bit about, you know, your time in wrestling, uh, what you have got you into it uh, as a fan and everything like that. And then uh, kind of like what you're doing now with uh, some of the training and stuff like that, that you've been doing over the years. We want to learn more about Roberto himself. What, what, what can you tell us here? Oh man. You know, like I, I started uh, uh, being involved with the uh, wrestling and kind of the whole thing long time now, you know, like it's been on and off and stuff like that. But uh, I, I think I started watching wrestling when I was like 13 years old. I think I stayed up too late one night and put TSN on and it was like sitting there it was Monday Night Raw. I think it was Shawn Michaels versus Yokozuna. I was hooked ever since. Yeah. Uh, wrestling is awesome. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll, I'll be it from the last couple of years, maybe. But uh, that's uh, one thing we yeah. got to maybe mention is uh, COVID's really played a big number on wrestling in general, especially on an independent level. Uh, you do a lot of training and stuff like that. Uh, has that completely affected the training situation at the moment? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Uh, as soon as, uh, you know, the pandemic hit, that was that's, that was pretty much it for training, uh, which is really unfortunate because I, I feel like we were getting like a really good, uh, like, you know, fluid motion kind of going on and things were really moving along really, really well. And yeah, everything kind of just, you know, got derailed. There's not really a lot of, uh, I don't think there's a whole lot of uh, training going on anywhere, really. Uh, yeah, it kind of sucks. Yeah, it kind of depends, I guess, what market you're in and stuff like that, what the uh, rules and stuff are. But in Saskatchewan, we've really been locked down here, uh, nowhere to go. So, of course, the training hasn't happened. I'm sure there's been a lot of calls for people wanting to get into involved and get to training and stuff. Uh, have you heard anything about uh, the future for what's going on with COVID-19? If uh, going to be able to get back to doing some sort of training over the next while, uh, what are the restrictions really holding back at the moment? You know, it's, it's not really necessarily uh, restrictions that are holding it back. I, I feel, uh, I think a lot of it has to do with finding a, uh, an area that wants to have a lot of people in it. You know what I mean? That, that they, there's restrictions, but I don't think they want to allow people into a certain building, you know, because of COVID, you know, and fear and all that other stuff. So uh, I wouldn't say that COVID has directly, you know, because people want to get sick or whatever, there's precautions that taken place. There's masks you can wear and, uh, you know, no more than, I think it's 10 people now. They changed it, I think. I think uh, yeah, inside out 10 people or something. Yeah, Yeah. so I, I think it's mostly finding, uh, I guess what you would say, like a venue or a place that would allow that kind of uh, stuff. And and really, that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to be it's always tough in this kind of market too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I would say it's probably, for me anyway, it's, it's the biggest challenge. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. So, Hopefully it'll get back to something soon. Now, Papa Smokes, anything you want to add there? Yeah, I was just going to say, like, hasn't COVID been a complete kick in the nuts to <laughs> wrestling and to any uh, performative uh, uh, art such as uh, music and, and everything else? I mean, just you can't even have a crowd in the room to do this stuff anymore. And I mean, we were just getting going with uh, our brand new Saskatoon Wrestling Federation when the wheels fell off due to COVID and uh yeah, I mean, you know, it's just a waiting game. What a crappy year it's been. And uh, I try and remain positive in my own mind about things, but it just still grates me. I mean, the opportunities that have been lost over this past year. And I mean, talking about training, thinking about the next batch of uh, Saskatchewan and Saskatoon based wrestlers that could have been, you know, a, a year into their training already or getting something done. And uh, yeah, this has just put a kink in everyone's plans. Uh, how shitty, eh? It, well, it absolutely has. But, uh, I mean, it, it, it literally has ruined everything. Like, like it, it's it's just uh, to say that it puts a pause on, on stuff is like it, it's true. Like, obviously, it's true. Everything's kind of on pause now. But I think at this point, it's worse than pause. You know, like it's like it's on pause and the pause button stuck. It, it, yeah. It's just like you, everything. Everything. Everyone has to pretty much I feel anyway, has to start new like from scratch like all over again and there's tons of 
I don't know how they do it. I, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they afford to do it, but there's tons of companies out there that are still you know, trying to run shows uh, in the middle of the pandemic. And I mean, pandemic aside and being like, Oh, it's so dangerous or whatever. Uh, yeah. That aside, like I just financially, I just don't understand how some of these companies are doing it. Like, yeah. I don't know how guys are getting paid. I don't know if guys are getting paid and if guys aren't getting paid, uh, to me, that's terrible. That that's terrible business. I mean, let's not forget that it's it's wrestling business, right? It's the wrestling business, the business of wrestling. And the whole idea is to get paid to do your art, if that's what you want to call it. So I, I hope that nobody's doing it for free. That would be absolutely terrible if that was the case. I feel. Yeah. And, you know, most of them would love to be able to go out there and just do it for the fun of doing it. But of course, a lot of people have had to make a living off of their uh, art, their professional wrestling and stuff like that. And I've uh, probably seen it in a lot of the, the friends that you've come to know over the years and stuff like that, how much this has hurt them and damaged them financially as performers in the business. Oh, yeah, for sure. I know a bunch of guys that, you know, they their life is is wrestling like they that that's their job is is wrestling they don't have like a a part-time job or a full-time job or whatever that's their source of income so yeah I'm, uh it's affected a lot of people g greatly <laughs> well and now with the new travel restriction with canada and stuff like that if they do decide to go anywhere outside of canada coming back and having to quarantine for what was it uh, i believe a week or two weeks in a hotel at a cost of $200 per night in that said hotel. I don't know any wrestler wrestling in Canada right now that could afford that kind of return home. I don't know anybody with a job that can afford that. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's crazy. Yeah, it's wild, man. Uh, it's just, uh, it, yeah. it needs to come to an end. We need to get back to some sort of normalcy. And I mean, it's good to see that hopefully this is the tail end of it. We'll get back to there this year, start seeing things happening and stuff like that. Uh, definitely looking forward to that time. I want to go back to, oh, I think we lost him here for a minute. Well, uh, there you go. Oh, you're back. <laughs> Okay, so with everything said, I want to go back to the training. At what point in uh, your career did you decide that uh, training the new breed of uh, professional wrestlers was going to be the right path for you? Uh, you know, uh, aside from like being directly in the business, you know, uh, which is not really my bag or anything like that. Uh, I enjoy teaching. I, I enjoy it like it's you get to a certain age, right? Uh, especially in professional wrestling, I feel uh, that when not necessarily you should hang it up or, you know, stupid shit like that, but you, you should probably start thinking, well, I, I can't, maybe don't want to bump as much. I don't want to do, I don't want to get body slammed on the floor or anything like that. You know what I mean? Like you just don't want to, I don't know. You're just not at your prime anymore. So you want to pass off the knowledge that you have uh, and hopes of saving the, the business the way it was a little bit, if that makes sense. As much as yeah. you can in a modern era, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, like when I came into the business, it was very, 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 very different than what it is today. Uh, in so many different ways, like in so many different ways, it's it's. I just kind of sounds stupid, but it's hard to explain. You know, like uh, the respect and stuff is there, and all this and all that, but like. The, the actual performance of professional wrestling is just vastly different. I, I don't know how to explain it. You know, there's not a lot of storytelling anymore. Uh, it's all just like, oh, yeah, let's just see if we can get these fans to cheer for us. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, and I feel that, like, I kind of grew up learning just how to tell a story, not necessarily how to do a lot of flips or you know, spin on someone's head. And I don't know, I, I don't know how to do a lot of that stuff, but I do know, I feel like I, I could tell a story and I want to be able to transfer that knowledge to somebody else. So the business doesn't completely just go to shit. Yeah. And I mean, that's, uh, that's great advice too. At the same time, I mean, we obviously uh, myself and Papa Smokes got, what I've been watching for quite a few years, quite a long time ago. I mean, mine was late eighties, early nineties when I first started tuning in uh, Papa Smokes, I mean, who even knows how far back that guy goes and stuff like that, but it's all good. I mean, we understand that. I mean, we've talked about it a lot on our show as well, too, about uh, just that whole build. And it doesn't have to be a big fleshed out storyline like uh, some people are expecting that they saw all through the Attitude Era. Just having a reason for two guys to have a 
dislike for each other and building towards that fight that they need to have and fleshing it out in the ring and stuff and like that and telling a story uh, emotionally and stuff like that through action and everything. And a lot of that, I think, can catch on and be done if the right people are passing it along. And unfortunately, it's not seen everywhere. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I totally agree. I, I think in this day and age, uh, you know, as wrestling kind of progressed from like the Attitude Era to whatever era they are called their eras, uh, it, the fans seem to have a little bit more power in choosing what happens in the business. You know what I mean? And I don't know how that started. Uh, uh, maybe it was, you know, a lot of independent guys uh, doing some flashy stuff and fans thought it was cool. So, you know, they reeled them in and, and, and that's that, but it's, yeah, I don't know, man. Like it's, it's not, it's not the way it used to be. That is for sure. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how else to explain it. I, I not a big fan of modern day wrestling, to be honest with you. Yeah. I honestly, <clears throat> I honestly think that the, a lot of the problems started when, uh, you know, that the, the people, the, the, common people that are going to start uh, wrestling and becoming involved in the business always look up to the larger companies for inspiration of how to do this. And I think that's where the disconnect started is uh, the, uh, that the, the common fans and, and the, the new wrestlers that were coming up started to see some of this horse shit on TV that was like overbooked uh, feuds, uh, uh, overbooked matches with all kinds of silliness and comedy and all kinds of huge spots. And of course the young people are going to imitate the professionals, so to speak, that they see on TV. And this has also come through the business in, in terms of promoters as well that think that yeah. it's too much time to learn the whole ins and outs of the wrestling business, how to book I mean, think of uh, even in the 70s and 80s, how few bookers there were in all of professional wrestling. Now there's a million companies and these guys just do their booking themselves or leave it up to the boys. The boys, I mean, the boys and girls, the wrestlers, of course. And uh, a lot of them have hot shotted themselves in order to make quick, immediate money. But they're doing harm to the professional wrestling business in general and their own business in the long run by hot shotting booking all the time. And that's just become the norm, I think now, so that we don't have the uh, elaborately set up storylines that we used to have. We don't have the nice storytelling inside each match. It's now the talent trying to get themselves over so they can get uh, cheers from this crowd, but also get booked at the next show for getting their shit in and they got to get all their shit in in order to be noticed because I got a triple flip from the top and I got this backwards thing that I do off the top rope is as long as everybody's standing there to catch me and they do this shit in every single match now. And it just now it means nothing to the rest of the card to the rest of the year. I think you have to book a wrestling company, not only in the following weeks coming up, but the months and the years. And it's just not set to that, that, that model isn't set to do it like that. And that's what's hurting the business in a large part, I think. Oh, I agree. I mean, I couldn't have said it better myself, really. Uh, you know, it's funny that you mentioned bookers. Like, are there, if you sit back and think about it, really, like on, on, a, on a main, like a high level of professional wrestling, you know, like, let's say like the, the WWEs and AEWs and all them, uh, like, are there really bookers anymore? Yeah, I don't even know. Like, I couldn't say. Oh, I know like, in WWE oh. they have a creative team, which yeah, hires TV writers to write a TV show. But these aren't wrestling people, and they right. don't understand the business. It's, I mean, the same the same thing with uh, that happened at the end of WCW, right? I mean, like, yeah, guys yeah. writing television and had nothing to do nothing about the business whatsoever. Yeah, like, yeah. I. I Personally, I don't think there is such a thing as a as a as a booker anymore. I, uh, at least not on that level of uh, professional wrestling, right? Like like you said, they all sit at a table, they all throw really stupid fucking ideas at you know whoever is listening, and they're just like, mm -hmm, let's just put that on TV because that's what is you're getting on TV. Yeah, yeah, it's like, been that way through the whole year. I mean, just look at. Like it's just, and 
it's almost like the WWE is shitting on themselves on purpose. And they're like, oh, this is getting over and people are really liking it. Oh, well, let's just fucking squash it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's squash uh, what's on. And then, you know, you flip the channel to uh, Wednesday nights. And uh, the only thing they're missing is a net and, a, and fucking swinging bars from the ceiling <laughs> on both the show. It's it. So. Yeah. <laughs> They, 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 they failed to remember what wrestling used to be and what made it great in the first place because I believe they listened to this niche amount of fans that you get on Twitter and social media and stuff like that that tend to all agree to you know love one certain thing and they will push passionately about it. And they allowed this, in my opinion, sorry. to essential... Oh, sorry. I think we lost him. <laughs> nope, sorry. There he is again. Fine. All right. Hey, yeah, so. oh, oh. <laughs> So as I, as I was putting, I just think that they listen to this uh, niche amount of fans on social media. Oh, we're losing them again. <laughs> there we go. So they listen to this niche amount of fans on social media and they take what they're saying is gospel. And it shows in the amount of people that are actually tuning in and viewing a lot of the shows nowadays. When uh, you're turning out numbers on Wednesday nights at less than a million viewers per show. I mean, this is yeah. not showing good for the wrestling profession. People say, okay, well, the key demographics are great, but... The key demographics would be a lot better if you had three million viewers instead of uh, five hundred to seven hundred fifty thousand viewers. It's you know I I always I like I don't really think the WWE at this point uh, or Vince or whoever you want to like kind of point your finger at or you know uh, like I don't really think they care about ratings. No, I I really don't. I I don't think they could give they could give two shits about. 750 million a hundred fucking million you know like they just they don't care like they're getting money thrown at them left and right you know like peacock bought the network yeah. fox they got put on fox like what money like why would it why would they care about ratings yeah and then they'll probably go sell the whole company to disney in two years yeah i mean really like it, like they have so much money like i mean look at their roster alone like how much money are they just throwing away on like they just like I don't even know like hundreds of wrestlers that they have like yeah. they have to got to be three digits of wrestlers that they have easily yeah and most of them not doing anything and yeah I was gonna say half of them sitting at home yeah. or watching the show from this you know the back with the mask on it's crazy yeah I mean they might be on one of the smaller shows that uh, air on the network I'm not sure I don't tune in anymore I. I don't know where half the that half the roster is, but you go look online, you're like holy shit, they're still there, and they're probably getting. I mean, I know they're not making huge money. I mean, we're talking wrestling; nobody's making huge money in wrestling unless your name is Brock Lesnar. But I mean, oh, well, I, I don't. I'm not necessarily sure about that. <laughs> I mean, people that aren't on TV are making pretty damn good money for doing absolutely nothing. Well, fair enough for doing absolutely nothing. Yeah, I mean, I'd take their job too for sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, like that's. It's nuts. It's nuts. It's just crazy how I don't understand how wrestling is, in my opinion, again, is so bad. But like, it's almost as popular as it's ever been. It is weird like that. I mean, again, it comes down to that. The, the fans that are passionate about it are passionate about it all the time. And they will even defend the garbage that's produced to no oh. end and stuff like that. And it's amazing how they'll jump from one to another. You see the fights with wwe and aew fans and they've got these guys talking about wwe sucks aew is awesome but you know aew is just producing a, another version of what wwe was already doing and all their arguments really don't make a whole lick of sense in the grand scheme of things neither company's good they're all producing absolute garbage trash television it's not even good tv low on good wrestling right now yeah and that kind of brings me to another another point we were talking about storylines right like uh Oh, we, you know, there no one's really producing storylines, which I mean, it's not necessarily true, right? They they do have Raw has a a couple storylines, not mm -hmm. a lot to be fair, but like they usually have one or two major storylines that they kind of follow. It, the, like half the problem is that the storylines are being like played out by people that suck. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, like they just suck. It, it's uh, not that I'm on a toot my own horn. I'm saying that it's everything, but like as a fan watching television, I think that I have earned a right to say over the years of watching professional wrestling and being a fan of professional wrestling to be like, that guy sucks at what he's <laughs> doing. like. He's very bad at what he's doing. Like I I'm watching TV and he's not good. And I've watched wrestling for a very long time. Right. 
it's like watching a TV show when you're like, oh yeah, the first season was way better than the third season or the rest of the seasons. It's like, yeah, these guys just suck. Like, you know, like it doesn't matter what story you give them. They suck. And then they go on the computer and they're typing, uh, I'm so sick of not being on TV. It's because you suck. Like you're not good. That's why you're not on TV. (laughs) But I mean, case in point proven with some of the jumps that have gone from WWE to AEW thinking that they were going to be, you know, the next big star and stuff like that. And they seem to have fallen off TV altogether in that whole jump. Who's, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think that, like the guys that jumped over, I'm sure I like, let's say Miro, for example, uh, he jumped over and like, who the fuck is that guy? Yeah. Well, especially now who gives a shit. Like, he, he had something going good with like, you know, when he was getting a good push, but like, it's not like they stopped pushing him because he was good. No. Yeah. You know, you're starting you start to notice he, all these guys that Vince really didn't seem to care about all that much it's proven when they get the you know a little bit of freedom with the decisions on what they're doing how terrible they truly can be yeah i mean if you take a look at it like do you like like what was his name rusev if do you like rusev from his like first run like wrestlemania against cena on a tank right and like him playing fucking video games (laughs) i i want to rewind time back to wrestlemania against cena personally like what the fuck like i how, how can anybody be like, oh, yeah, that's a great gimmick, and I'm going to make some, oh, wait, I'm already making a shit ton of money. I can do whatever the hell I want. Yeah, it's it's pathetic at this point. It is just guys doing whatever the hell they want, and it's all uh, WCW 2000 as they were coming to an end. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're kind of like the guys that wrestle, that never really wanted to get trained to wrestle, right, that got booked with a big company or started their own big company and it got really uh, popular and everyone's just like, yay, like you're super awesome at what you do because you were successful in having a company, but like the wrestling still fucking sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's just fucking sucks. <laughs> well, to use Miro as an example too. I mean, here's a guy that got signed by WWE without any wrestling background, but look at the guy. He looks like a brute. He looks like a caveman. He looks like he could rip most people right in half with his bare hands. So you're going to sign this guy. But he sat down in developmental for, what was it, three or four years? The guy was, he was was basically not getting the the hang of it whatsoever. They gave him a run. They gave him a push. And we've talked about pushes before. A lot of the times when you get a push, it's because you need one. And they want to sell some of your merch. And it's yeah. not moving, so they got to give you an angle of some kind to get you over because you can't get yourself over. Right. So, okay, we got this Bulgarian brute who looks like uh, like some kind of an Olympic wrestler or weightlifter or something. He moves over to AEW, and you know they say, what do you want to be? And he says, well, I want to be the real me. I'm a gentle guy. I'm into Disney and video games. So I'm just going to be that. And to the viewer, it's like, what the hell are you doing, man? You look like a fucking brute, like you could kill someone. Or you're out here acting like a nice guy, or talking soft and everything. It just doesn't uh, it, it, it doesn't connect for me. It, I don't know why you would do that when you have that look already. You could be over as a brute. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing, right? Like, these guys want to just make money being themselves, essentially, right? You know? And, like, Sorry, that's not that when again when I broke in, that's not what wrestling is about. Sorry. Yeah, that's that's not what professional wrestling is about. It's not about you just being like, oh yeah, you know, like here's Roberto. I'm gonna put on like I don't know, like a fucking ski pants and a a flower shirt and be like a douchebag and you know whatever. Like it's just it. That's not how it is. You, especially in the level of the WWE, right? You can wrestle. There's not a think. I think with the performance center now, there isn't a person in there that can't wrestle, right? Like they can go through the motions, they can take the bumps and do a suplex and all that other stuff. But like, you can't be you because, sorry, you don't make money. You suck. You know, like, yeah. and fans don't want to pay to see the real you. They want the pumped up version of you. They want they want the uh, the ideal version who want to fantasize about these people, about how cool and strong and what good wrestlers they are. We don't care about your video games and your sweatpants and everything else coming out here. 
And we want to see the you, the wrestler. That's right. That's exactly right. I mean, like, uh, we all know that, like, Bray Wyatt, his face isn't actually melted. <laughs> right. Just... Like, he's playing a role, uh, whether it's a good role or a bad role. Either way, like, he's trying to do his best. They gave him a ball and he's rolling with it. And it's, it's interesting. I'd rather watch Melty Face Fiend over, you know, jacked up Eminem looking Miro. Uh, yeah. That's fair. As long as we don't have to watch Fiend inside the ring anymore. Oh God. I'm just, I'm over shit. Uh, what's he going to be next? Yeah. Like how does, like how does the that concept, story? The concept was cool at first. It was an okay concept. Interesting. The dude can talk, <laughs> but man, Bray Wyatt has zero uh, charisma once he gets inside the ropes. I mean, it just well, it's I mean, how, void how, of anything. How can he show any charisma when, you know, like half his, he's, He's literally his whole body is a fucking mask now. Yeah. Like they managed to put a hood over his entire body. So mm -hmm. even he's, like I saw the gimmick he did with the, the melty face, and like he looks like he can barely move. Like they have him in like a whole giant like body condom costume, and like what do you, what's what's he supposed to do? Like he can't dance. He can't say anything in the mask. Like he's everyone's like yeah the fiend and Bray Wyatt's he's so good at being the fiend, but like. He, He's digging a hole that he can't get out of. Where the fuck does he go after this? Watch the cinematic bullshit they pull on the weekend. I'm telling you, man, that's not Bray Wyatt in that suit. He'll be reborn or something. Yeah. Why? It, it's Bo be Dallas. It's Bo Dallas in the fucking suit. Bray's going to come out as something else. Oh, my God. And then there'll be some sort of fucking three. But Bo Dallas still. Yeah, he still works there. Yeah, uh, that's what I was getting at earlier. It's like a guy like that works there on the roster. He's better in the ring than his fucking brother, and he's sitting there doing nothing. That's a good, a good paying job. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> Jesus. But I mean, again, like I mean, they're, 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 again, the cinematic stuff is just what's killing it too. I mean, well, let's talk about that for a minute. We talked about that on the show endlessly over the past year and stuff like that. I mean, everybody seemed to be high on it at first, but I mean, there is nothing good about the cinematic style of professional wrestling. I mean, occasionally the odd thing once in a while is all right, but 90% of it is just no good. It's not fun. It makes it look stupid. Uh, there's no point to it a lot of the time. I mean, I, I we both said we, we liked last year WrestleMania. There was the match with AJ Styles, The Undertaker. Cinematically, that one was reasonable. That was okay. It had a little yeah. bit of thought to it. But now all this stuff they're pulling off with the fiend, the burning and stuff, they're going for that pop factor that we were talking about. And that's all that anybody wants. They want these little spots they can pop about, jump on Twitter, get trending for their five, 10 minutes of fame and stuff like that. And then just fizzles out immediately afterwards. You know, it's kind of like, uh, it, it, it's kind of like AEW and WWE are the same way, like, but different, right? Like the WWE does shit like that. You're right for like, pop factor they want well not pop factor so much as like uh what do you what, what like video clip factor you know like what yeah. can they put together in a video package oh they'll make, make, they'll make you pop when you're on the uh, thunderdome watching it though yeah yeah you know like it's 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 kind of crazy because like the wwe wants like the pop factor but in like video clip forms like memories you know they're always like oh what's your wrestlemania moment and shit like that right that that's super important in the wwe so like they're super high on doing shit like that to make moments like, ah, oh, yeah, look at this moment. The fiend got burned alive and shit like that. And AEW just wants to make the people pop by doing anything yeah. like short of like kicking a baby on TV <laughs> to get up. Right. Like that's what they're willing to do. So they're kind of, kind of like the same, the same thing. The WWE's like, Oh yeah, let's do this. So let's burn this fucking guy in the ring. Uh, okay. Like, okay, it's like, what do you do from there? And now they bring him back. So you're going to kill him again. You're going to burn him alive, run him over with the steam, tr like steam. Like, what are you going to do? They do with Bray Wyatt slowly. And he probably makes it pretty good though. I mean, he makes a lot of money. I would assume he's probably one of their top paid talent. Uh, and he doesn't work very much. No, not at all. Really. I mean, when was Dang. the last time he actually wrestled a match? SummerSlam? I think it was actually when yeah. he got burned. Yeah, that was at SummerSlam. He just, he's been back for what, two weeks now, if that. I think he was gone for nine months or some nine or 10 months. Yeah. It's, yeah, sure. Yeah. Hey, like, pitch that idea. Okay, man, like, we're going to burn you alive 
and you're just going to be off TV for nine months. Yeah, we'll let <laughs> we'll let a 100 we'll pound, five foot tall uh, girl do all your uh, all your stuff there for you. Yeah, and do it terribly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. She doesn't. It's better than it, watching her wrestle. Oh, I, it, don't get me wrong. I, it, it's it's bad enough watching what she does as it is, but then she goes and does this fiend shit, and then next thing you know, she's on her podcast two minutes later. That's also on the network, and she's sitting there talking about her fangirl times, loving the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and shit like that. This is what kills it for me: is going and seeing what these people do after the fact. If you're a badass wrestler doing some sort of crazy gimmick like that, why the fuck are you being yourself on the same network? doing these kind of goody goody podcasts afterwards. And, and, and it's gone, right? Like that, that part of professional wrestling, I think, you know, like when I mentioned earlier about trying to keep what little bit of the business there is left, uh, I think that part of the business, the uh, kayfabe or whatever, it's been completely dissolved. Like it's, it's, uh, I, I, and if it hasn't, it's at a very low point where having it uh, come back is just very, unlikely if it does come back i i think it'll be in as like a gimmick you know like as a fad oh yeah let's bring cafe back and it'll be a fad for a little bit and yeah i i think it's gone though i i really do and it's you're right though it's it's a tragedy i mean like that's kind of the whole point of it was the whole point of the business i was gonna say like i saw alexa bliss on i think it was instagram and it was like a picture of her all creepy demony looking and then, like, the next page is, like, uh, with her boyfriend. Oh, he's so cute or something like that. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's suspense <laughs> disbelief. I mean, again, we're the, all modern fans know what's going on to a certain degree. Know enough to know that, okay, she's not actually possessed. The fiend didn't actually get burned. All this kind of shit or any of the things going on. They're smart enough to that. But the part that kills it is doing these things afterwards, the podcast and stuff. If they yeah. want to have a podcast, feature somebody on the roster that maybe isn't currently doing something else that they could put into a podcast format that fits that role currently, that keeps that enough of kayfabe alive that we don't have to keep suspending disbelief every time we turn on a program these days. Do you know how disappointed I was when I found out that like Mankind didn't actually live in fucking boiler rooms? <laughs> like that was so cool. funny me as a child. I was like, what the fuck? This guy doesn't live in boiler rooms? Yeah. Fuck you, man. And you're a liar. Yeah, well, I mean, it'd be safe for me, but wondering about uh, why uh, Brett and Owen didn't actually uh, hate each other back in the day. It was kind of disappointing. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, I feel the same way, though. Like, it's uh, it's cool that people, you know, the whole point of professional wrestling, in my eyes, is to, to you know, suspend disbelief, to try and make people believe that, you know, and it's just, it's so not that anymore. It's just the complete opposite of, you know, oh yeah, it's you know, without using the the F word, like it's so you know, it's not real and blah blah blah, and it's yeah, okay, but like, do we have to just like, do we have to pander to that notion? You know, yeah, yeah, so stupid, so stupid. The, the business is a lot different now too. I mean, uh, talk even back to the maybe the eighties in the sort of territory uh, dying days of the territories and before. A lot of the kayfabe stuff and uh, and other aspects of the business were uh, kind of dictated through uh, the boys. Again, by the boys, I mean the wrestlers uh, uh, policing themselves. And uh, a lot of that was done through physical threats and intimidation. And the, the world's different than that now. People don't put up with that kind of stuff anymore. But uh, and the same thing, people call it gatekeeping now, by the way, that uh, promoters and trainers used to just weed out those who were weak and, and not willing to put in the work and, and not willing to subscribe to kayfabe and, and such like that. And uh, now you hear so much talk about it, glad that it, there's no gatekeeping anymore. But in a way, the, the business was stronger when they had that. Again, some of their methods of, of maintaining that were, were a little bit uh, barbaric by today's standards uh, that, you know, you just get your ass kicked for doing some of the stuff on Instagram or whatever. But uh, obviously it doesn't work like that anymore. But uh, yeah, I think something's lost since then, too, uh, in the way of kayfabe. I think the fans have always known that something was up with wrestling about, uh, you know, the legitimacy of the fights and such. But you can still suspend your disbelief if the the people involved, the wrestlers involved, are 
bringing you into this with with uh, convincing performances. Yeah, uh, yeah, and you said it again, right? Convincing performances, and there's not a lot of them anymore. Yeah. You know, like you watch a lot of the stuff on TV now and like, it's super cool that these guys are very talented and very athletic. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like good for them. Like I, I can't do any of that shit. You know, like I just can't, like I have trouble walking up the stairs for fuck's sake. So, you know, like it's, it's good for you, but like where, like, there's just no storytelling, even like, even if you're not even talking long-term storytelling, right? Like long-term angles and, and shit like that. But like, even like if you were to cl- watch the second match that has no storyline behind it, no angle behind it or anything like that, like you should still be able to go in the ring and tell a story in the ring between those two people that are supposed to be competing against each other uh, for a win. And that it's, there isn't that anymore. Like it's, uh, it's been a very long time since I've seen wrestling like that. You know what I mean? Like, especially on TV, like, especially on television. Uh, I don't see a lot of it anymore. Like AEW toted for a long time. Yeah. Wins are going to matter. When was the last time wins actually mattered on that show or they, they took advantage of it or anything. It, you know what I mean? Like they just fell into the same kind of groove. Like you said earlier that the WWE is in. Yeah, exactly. And it's why um, even for us, we tuned out of that kind of stuff and focused in on more of the independent things and uh, some of the shows that you can get available on YouTube, which we feel are trying to keep that a bit more alive, trying to do a little bit more of that uh, fleshed out storytelling, both in the ring and with uh, long term booking as well, too. We're seeing a lot of great things out of the NWA and MLW, a lot of these independent companies coming up that are really pushing for the bringing that back and it's really starting to pay off for a lot of them too also seeing it with a lot of the overseas talent uh, a lot of the uh companies in mexico like AAA and stuff like that dragon's gate in japan now coming over and doing things with mlw as well too i mean there's a lot of great stuff going on it just it it's hidden right now well, well yeah i mean that like you know the pandemic doesn't really help that you know i i don't know a lot of, about that stuff you know like i i stopped watching wrestling for a, a while now, you know, to be honest with you, I'd say just a little past the pandemic, a little after the pandemic, I stopped watching and I, yeah, it's just, I couldn't watch stuff on TV anymore. And I'm not really educated in, uh, you know, finding like small independent companies other than the ones that I already know about locally. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so, but yeah, no, uh, anyways, uh, with that being said, uh, we've run quite a long time here, so I think we're going to wrap it up for the day. But again, Roberto, thank you for joining us on Ring Respect here today. It's great having you as a guest. We should do this more often. Uh, yeah, I totally I totally would do this more often. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, well, let's make it more of a great th- uh, more of a regular thing here. So uh, thanks yeah, for, for being sure. on the show. Papa Smokes, as thank always, has been me. great. And uh, thank you to everyone for tuning in. Backbreaker Media provides a unique look into Western Canadian wrestling. From video production to podcasts to Twitch streams, BBM looks to show everyone what makes wrestling in Western Canada special right from the voices that make it happen. Wrestling fans, welcome back to your favorite wrestling podcast, Ring Respect Radio. Latest episode, I believe episode 15, if I am correct, as I've been told, of the Dad Bod Squad pod. Okie dokie folks and welcome back to Monday Night Shaw right here on the Backbreaker Media Network. Check out our flow page to discover all things Backbreaker Media. Backbreaker Media, Western Canadian Wrestling, from those who make it happen.